let's go ahead and go back over to our screen manager in the solution explorer and right click on the screen manager folder and add a new folder we're going to call this screens just to keep track of our screens so um, we will right click on this new screens folder and add a new class this one we will call test screen okay so it's going to create a new test screen for us. <clears throat> now we will uh, tell this test screen to, in oh, sorry, we're going to tell it to inherit the properties of base screen. All right. So when we create this, it's going to create a new instance of our base screen class and bring it into our test screen. Uh, and then we'll set up some uh, local variables for that screen. So we're gonna say private test text as a string. And we're just gonna say something silly like we can have nice things. Yay. All right. <laughs> so we have to tell it where to draw. So say private text position as a uh, new vector two. And we'll store the coordinates of our uh, string that we intend to draw in here. So we'll say Let's put it uh, 20 pixels to the right and 195 pixels down. And <clears throat> next we will say private is alive to tell us that uh, the screen is going to stay alive. Or basically keep track of whether it's alive or not. We're going to store that as a boolean, so it's true or false. We'll just say it's true that it is alive when it first uh, comes to be. And finally, we will add a private lifespan as a double. Okay. And the reason for this is that what we are going to do with our test screen is create... Um, a timer to make it disappear after a certain amount of time <clears throat> as a test. So, uh, first thing we need to do here is add a public sub new uh, to create a new instance of the class. Each screen needs to have a name. <clears throat> so we'll give it a name property and we will call it Test screen. And with this name, we can control it through a screen manager. All right. Now we need to tell it how to update uh, through the screen manager. So we're going to say public overrides sub update. Okay. And uh, the overrides is telling it to override whatever is in the base screen class. Now, um, as you can see, we set each one of these to overridable. So that's exactly what we're doing here is overriding whatever is here in the base screen. Of course, these are all blank. So we're not really overriding much there, but <clears throat> we can go ahead and get rid of this my base update because we're not updating the base. Um, We'll start out by saying if lifespan is less than 5,000, then lifespan plus equals globals dot game time dot elapsed game time 
total milliseconds. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're actually creating our first timer in X and A. <laughs> uh, we're going to say that after 5,000 milliseconds, it's going to uh, update. <clears throat> else is alive equals false. All right. Actually, okay, let me let me uh, restate that. We're checking to to make sure that 5000 milliseconds has not elapsed. If it has not, then it's going to increment lifespan by the milliseconds, okay? Of the total the actual elapsed game time. When it hits 5,000 milliseconds, it's going to say is alive equals false, all right? And that's going to tell us that our screen needs to die or go away um, <clears throat> and be added to the remove list in our screen manager. So then we'll say if is alive equals false, then me, that's uh, this screen, dot state equals screen state dot shutdown. All right. So it's going to run through this every game cycle. It's going to be updating and incrementing this until this is no longer true. And it, it'll ignore this until this is false. And uh, once uh, that occurs, then it's going to shut our screen down. All right. So that's pretty simple. Um, finally, what we need to do with our screen is tell it to actually draw something. Because um, we want our screen to actually uh, display. So now we're going to be overriding the uh, draw routine of the base class. So we'll say public overrides sub draw. All right. We can go ahead and get rid of the mybase.draw. And uh, just like every other drawing routine in XNA, we are going to have our sprite batch begin and end. And then in the middle of that routine, we're going to have our actual drawing occurring. So we're going to say globals.spriteBatch.begin. All right. And we can go ahead and put our ending in there as well. Globals dot sprite batch dot end. All right. Now we have to tell it what to draw. So the only image that we actually have in here right now is uh, a picture of Rad Marvin that we added in the previous uh, tutorial. So. That would be that little rad face PNG. And we added that to our textures global up here. So that's really the only graphic that we can reference. Uh, I don't actually want to draw his face all over this screen. So what I'm going to do is just uh, steal a little pixel off of it. Um, so I'm going to say globals.spritebatch.draw. And we will reference the texture of Rad Marvin. So we'll say textures dot Rad Avatar. Um, now we have to have a destination rectangle for that. And we want pretty much the whole screen in this case because we're going to be drawing a full screen screen. <laughs> so we'll say new rectangle. <clears throat> and we will begin drawing in the top left corner, which is always 0, 0. And uh, I'm going to use globals.gamesize.x. If you recall, that uh, was our global um, width of our game screens. And then we'll do the y as well. So we'll say globals game size sorry dot y which is the height so it's going to be a full screen image 
or rectangle. And for our source, since I don't want to grab the entire picture of Rad Marvin, I just want to grab a little tiny piece of him. Um, let's see what. This is actually a really good way to um, color screens. Uh, you can use a single image uh, for all sorts of things, uh, coloring and whatnot. I'm just going to go in a little ways um, and grab one of these pixels. I'm going to say 16 pixels in by 16 pixels down and uh, just one of those for fun. So my, my source rectangle will be a new rectangle and I'm going to go 16 pixels into Red Marvin there and 16 pixels down and grab a single pixel for the source. And I don't want any tinting on that, so I'm just going to do color.white. And I explained those colors uh, in, again in the previous tutorial. Um, <clears throat> next, we want to draw a string to the screen. Um, so we're going to say globals.spritebatch.drawString. And we established a string up above. So we're going to use that. Uh, first, we have to reference one of our sprite fonts that we added earlier. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use the Georgia 16. So I'm going to say fonts, uh, Georgia 16. And the text that I want to draw is the text we put in at the top here. That's going to be our test text. So I'm just going to say test text. Te test text. That's kind of a tongue twister. And I want to draw it in the location of the text position that we created up there as a variable. And you can put that really wherever you want. Um, finally, I need a color for my string, so I'm just going to say color.red. Alright, <clears throat> and really that's all there is that we need to add to this, to, to draw this new screen. Um, for a battle screen, you may be adding a bunch of uh, other textures and sprites and drawing them in various locations. Uh, it can be a lot more complex than it is here, but as a test, this should be uh, great. So we've created a timer uh, to uh, basically generate a lifespan for the screen because we don't want it to display forever. Um, just for fun. Later on, screens will be controlled with uh, input values, keystrokes, and things like that. For like an inventory screen, you might press the I key to open that up or escape to close it out. All sorts of things that you can do there. 